In this video today, we are going to discuss about an interesting topic, the computer generations. This is basically the evolution or the development of computer systems. It is normally discussed as its succession through different generations. Now, generation of computers started back in 1946. It has been evolving ever since, and its advancement can be clearly seen today. There are five generations in number, that is, from the first generation to the second to the third, fourth, and fifth generations. We will now discuss these generations one by one. Let's start with the first generation of computers. The first programmable computer was built during the Second World War. This was in 1946 to 1959. This generation of computers was done or was built by two Americans, that is the American physicist John Markley and the American electrical engineer John Pepster. They built an electronic computer called the ENIAC. ENIAC stands for the Electronic Numeric Integrated and Calculator. This was the first computer to be built by the two Americans. Now this generation computers has some features. These computers based the technology on the vacuum tubes. These were the only electronic components available during those days. The input was based on patched cards and paper tapes, while the output was displayed on printouts. Because this is a computer, it must be fed in with some information or data and it must produce an output. Now the input was based on the punch cards and the paper tapes while the output was displayed on printouts. These computers could calculate in milliseconds. That was their speed of calculation. These computers were very big in size and their weight was much higher. These computers weighed about 30 tons. That is very heavy. These computers were very expensive. They were very costly. They had a limited storage capacity. What does this mean? These computers used the magnetic drums that could only store a small amount of data. Due to the use of the vacuum tubes, these computers consumed a lot of energy and thus produced a lot of heat. Due to the production of a lot of heat, these computers required a larger cooling system, which was a disadvantage. These computers were not that reliable and required constant maintenance. They had a very low work efficiency rate and they only used machine language, that is the low level language as a programming language. They only understood binary coded language. Examples of these generation computers include the Edivac, the Univac, the IBM 701 version and the IBM 650 version. That is all about the first generation. We can now talk about the second generation computers. This was introduced in 1959 and 1965. Now, these generation computers were based their technology on transistors. These transistors replaced the vacuum tubes that were used in the first generation. 
as their inputs these generation computers used assembly language and patched cards as their inputs now the replacement of the vacuum tubes by the transistors led to the decrease in the size of the electron component this was a good advantage because it resulted to the reduction of the size of the computers that brings a point that the second generation computers were smaller in size and they weighed far much less than the first generation computers due to the smaller weight these generation computers were now portable or their portability was at least better than the first generation The second generation computers had a better work efficiency. Their speed of data calculation was now in microseconds. These computers consumed a low amount of energy and thus produced a lower amount of heat compared to the first generation computers. Their cost was lower. than the first generation computers and unlike the first generation computers that used only the machine coded language these computers used a high level but procedural languages such as the cobol and the fortran for their primary storage these computers used the magnetic core and for their secondary storage they used the magnetic disks and tapes some of the disadvantages of these generation computers include the requirement of a large cooling system that is due to the high production of heat they also required constant maintenance and they were only used for specific purposes Now some of the examples of this generation computers include the Honeywell 400, the IBM 1794, the CDC 1604, the CDC 3600 and the Univac 1108 and many others. Now the next advanced generation was the third generation. This generation was introduced in the year 1965 to the year 1971. These computers based their technology on the integrated circuits. Now, this integrated circuits was just but a single component containing a number of transistors. The inventors of the IC were Robert Noyce and Jack Kilby in the year 1958 and 1959 This generation of computers also included a number of features Now the use of the integrated circuits in these computers led to the reduction of its size and its weight too This means they were smaller in size and weight compared to the second generation computers These generation computers also had an improved performance. They were fast and reliable due to the reduction of the computational time from microseconds to nanoseconds. This generation of computers had a larger storage capacity led to the development of many generation computers. They used the mouse and the keyboard as their input. It is at this generation that the operating system was invented. The operating system was used for bet- better resource management and it used the concept of time sharing and multiple programming. These computers were cheaper as compared to the second and first generation computers. They also consumed a low amount of energy and thus produced low heat. But these generations computers also 
had some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages was that the IC chips or the integrated circuit chips were very difficult to maintain. These chips also required a highly sophisticated technology for the manufacturing. Air conditioning was also a requirement in this generation due to the high production of heat. Examples of these generation computers include the PDP-8 version, the PDP-11 version, the ICL-2900, the IBM-360, and the IBM-370, and many more others. These generation computers later advanced to the fourth generation. The fourth generation computers was introduced in 1971 to 1980. This generation computers was based on LSI, that is large scale integration, and the VLSI, that is the very large scale integration as their technology. This is simply the microprocessor which was a programmable electronic chip used in the computer to carry out the logical and the arithmetic operations. It also exploited a graphical user interface technology to, have, to offer to the users a more comfortable environment. Features of this generation include the reduced size these generation computers had a smaller size as compared to the previous generation of computers. They were very fast in computation and they produced a negligible amount of heat. These computers required less maintenance. They also used high level languages. For example, the C sharp, the C++, the Java, and all other high-level languages were used in this type of computers. The disadvantage of this generation computers was the designing and the fabrication of the microprocessor was very complex. It also required the air conditioning facility or the air conditioning property. This is due to the presence of the integrated circuits. The, the ICs, that is the integrated circuits, they required an advanced technology in their manufacture. Some of the examples of this generation computers include the IBM 4341, the DEC-10, the STAR-1000, and the PUP-11, and many other examples. Now to the fifth generation or let's say the future generation. This generation was introduced in the 1980s and is still there up to date. This generation of computers was based on the artificial intelligence or let's say the ultra large scale integration technology. This resulted to the production of the microprocessor chips that could contain to 10 million electronic components within them. The aim of the fifth generation is to make a device which could respond to natural language input and are capable of learning and having a self-organization. Features of this generation computers include These computers are more reliable and work faster. These computers use the RAM, that is the random access memory, and the ROM, which is read-only memory, for primary storage. These computers also uses the hard disk drives and the solid-state drives. For the secondary storage. In this generation, 
all high level languages such as the java the c sharp c python are used in this generation computers are of different sizes and they contain unique features this generation also provides computers with more user friendly interfaces and multimedia features examples of computers in this generation include the desktops the laptops the notebook ultrabooks chromebooks and the current artificial intelligent robots till to date we can now conclude that the future of computers is now the artificial intelligence and we can ask ourselves whether the machines or the robots can now outsmart the human nature have you learned something new about the history and gen- the generation of computers today feel free to share a lesson to la- a lesson you learned today in the comment section in our next video we will discuss about the classification of computers